Hi, this is Diana. And you're listening to Home Bodies Only, where we welcome all bodies to join us as we break down and dissect HBO series. And this episode, we have a third body with us <laughs> as we break down and just like that, season two, episode five, Trick or Treat, our special, I was thinking it's not a co-host because that's two. So I was like, is this your tri-host? <laughs> right? <laughs> and her name is Ofek Price. And she is a recent graduate from SUNY New Paltz. She graduated in May with a bachelor's in sociology and political science. So welcome, Ofek. This is very exciting for us. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Okay. So why don't you tell everyone about, um, about you? Yes, of course. So like you said, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in sociology and political science. I am very passionate about a myriad of causes from environmentalism to Judaism to anti-racism and, and just human rights in general. Um, and I'm, I'm making that my passion project for this year to help out here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I'm starting my own podcast. It's called Self-Determination. It will be following Jewish trailblazers around their progressive journeys of activism. We have uh, lesbian Jews, we have queer Jews, we have disabled Jews. We have all, all the Jewish bodies that you can think of. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited. That's excellent. And you'll be recording awesome. this weekend, huh? You said? Yes, I am. That's great. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Podcasting is lots of fun. <laughs> all right. So I am going to try to do, we're doing our show a little differently for those of you who, who are listeners, our loyal listeners. Um, we actually have it chunked out into segments. Um, we are going to start with a recap. I'll just tell you, for, we're going to start with a recap of the episode. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens. This is, this is our podcast, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is going to be a fashion segment, a segment called I Can Relate. Um, a love hate segment. I am going to talk about some speech and or language, you know, character analyses. If I saw any, Diana is going to do some psychological analyses and some characters, and then we will wrap it up. So there you go. Let's see how this goes. Okay. So this episode, FYI, was directed by Cynthia Nixon. Some people say, oh, I can tell. Well, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I can tell. <laughs> um, it starts off, it's Halloween. I don't know if that has like a huge significance. Well, no, it did have a huge significance now that I think about it. Um, we do know Miranda's going back to school at Columbia. Um, she leaves very early in the morning from Che's apartment to go wake Brady up to make breakfast. She has, I think, a lot of guilt, clearly. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, at, the, at the party, um, they all, they're supposed to dress up that they go to. And Carrie is Helen Gurley Brown writer and founder of Cosmo Magazine, circa 1970. Um, and Miranda does not dress up. Charlotte and Harry are characters from The Americans. I don't watch that show, but <laughs> Harry in the wig. Anyway, um, LTW is Frankenstein's Monster's br Bride, right? They, I know they always say Frankenstein's Bride, but it's really the Monster's Bride, right? Okay. Anthony is a devil. Naya is Eartha Kitt as Catwoman. Seema's not in a costume. Um, Naya, you know, I guess wearing the cat costume, she's on the prowl. She's single. She wants to meet men. <laughs> See, so they do end up going to a hotel bar. Um, I mean, just something from the party, I guess. LTW is upset with Herbert because he was, uh, well, he was late. And then he also wore, he didn't wear the costume she had gotten for him. I, uh, I don't know if you guys caught that, but the costume was George Washington and he yes. plays George Washington in Hamilton. So oh, in Hamilton. Funny. Oh, yeah. you know what? Totally. Thank you. I... Oh this is why it was very on the <laughs> nose for here. me. <laughs> because I thought I... it was really funny. That's awesome. So, you know, that does make it better. I, I did see that he was in Hamilton. It just like went over my head. Thank yep. you. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, he was upset, like she was dancing with Anthony, the whole thing. And then he yeah. didn't want to wear a powdered wig, all that stuff. Right. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to like dissect by each, I guess, storyline. Let's just go with, okay. Che is hanging out with friends, staying out, staying up late. Miranda can't sleep. It's like not, it's not going very smoothly. Um, 
Che has her show test. It was a testing. Their show. And it did not. What did you say? Their show. Their show. Their show. I'm sorry. No, um, like a- and it did not go well at all. No. Um, Che's character wasn't believable, which is what Che had thought. Um, so basically, there's a lot of tension in their relationship yeah. and they're taking a break um for a few days supposedly miranda's going to be staying at naya's apartment um when they go to the hotel bar naya meets a guy seema meets a guy <laughs> naya meets <laughs> like one of the best looking men like i think i've ever seen at the bar um and yeah. bam like bam boom whatever <laughs> She yeah, doesn't walk of shame the next day. I mean, it was great. <laughs> um, Seema <laughs> meets See. this guy, the Nettle Gin guy, I guess we'll say. Um, He's my Field least favorite Gin? character. Yeah. Like he, I, there's a yeah. lot about him yeah. to unpack. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. If we're going least and favorite in this episode, it's him least. And my favorite was actually the guy Carrie on the bike. That was like, really, <laughs> really. I really liked him. I don't know. I yeah, I don't know. We'll get to that part. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> I, I had that in there. Okay. Um so Seema ends up with the nettle gin guy and his thing is he has a pump <laughs> for his penis. So that was like that storyline. She ends up not um sticking it out because he gets upset with her. Because she uses something to help her, and he doesn't like that. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that storyline. That's basically. I think I'm where, good on that one. That one. <laughs> um, I I mean, actually, as a like young person, that I got yeah. to see that like in a show, I thought it was um, positive influence to one have like these scenarios where Sima clearly did not care that he yeah. did not want her to use it. Um, and not in the, you know, in the way where she did something without his consent, but in the way where she said, okay, you're going to, you know, um, you're going to get mad at me or you're going to get upset at me. And I'm I'm going to just treat you with the same attitude. Exactly. I wasn't going to be rude to you about your penis pump. But now that mm-hmm. you're being rude to me about my, you know, something that gives me an orgasm, not even like something that's to uh, help grow yeah, right. you know like yeah, yeah like something right. to help her literally finish to be in <laughs> yes. pleasure and he's mad at her for receiving pleasure when yes. it was okay for him to just you know blow himself yeah. up so he could yeah so yeah. I, I thought that was really like positive to see that her reaction specifically like they didn't just mm-hmm. cut it off at oh my god what is this guy doing they showed us like her reaction and like her literally yeah. speaking for herself and doing what she wanted in the first place so yeah I thought that was good Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really mind it. I guess I, I did. It's, it's just funny. It's sometimes the way they depict, I don't know. Like it's totally, a they sex didn't in make the city it. Depiction. It's totally sex in the city. That would be like, yeah. I feel like a Samantha storyline. I know, was going to say it's like, very thing. Samantha. <laughs> yeah. Very Samantha. Yeah. yeah. But do um, we, like, so for me, I think with Samantha, had Samantha done this on Sex in the City, you know, X amount of years ago, I don't think she would have had the same support mm-hmm. that Seema would receive today. And that's something about mm-hmm. Seema that I'm, like, really grateful she, that they, a lot of people are upset that they brought back a Samantha, like, a, a sexually promiscuous yeah. character, or like, a sex positive mm-hmm. person, because right. they didn't want her to get replaced, which I understand. But I think yeah. with Seema, it's not really replacing her as much as saying hey, we are bringing back this, like, essence, and we're not going to judge her for it as much as we judge Samantha. Or, you know, yes. as much as, like, the yeah, audience yes. would. Yes, mm-hmm. and, uh, and the fact that she's older, too, and living as a single person, and we see mm-hmm. that side yeah. of it, and, um, oh, my gosh, sorry. I, oh, you didn't hear it, but my husband was calling me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's in the other room. Um, okay. Uh, all right, now I hear the home phone ringing. All Right. So, oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> it's your favorite thing. You can't really hear that in here. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna kill him. Okay, <laughs> I'm so thrown off. I'm sorry. Um, so after Seema, sorry. So we go to Carrie's storyline. Yeah, we want to go to Carrie because it made her stop yeah. in her tracks. Carrie, and then 
Yeah. Right, because that was she got the phone call from um Seema about about her about her guy and she ends up basically forcing a guy to crash. <laughs> um, I love the storyline. I loved it. Yeah, I didn't so I much. didn't I liked it too. Again, it felt it did feel very sex in the city. He mm-hmm. was on a Sex in the City episode almost exactly 20 years ago. His name is Peter Herman. Um, and he played, he, it aired July 27th, 2003. So almost exactly oh, 20 something. years ago. Um, wow. He played a man. It, it, yeah, I didn't get the full details, but he was at, this was when Charlotte and Harry were broken up and she was trying to meet a Jewish man and going to like single, you know, cause she, she converted and, and she was looking and yep. he was someone I think whose parent or, or aunt or something set them up and he was gorgeous. So she was like, Oh, but mm-hmm. there was something not totally right about him. Of course. But he did. So he was in an episode 20 years ago. I knew it. I'm staring at him. Like I yeah. know who that is. Um, anyway, so that was a little fun fact. So she takes him to urgent care. It was a really nice urgent care, by the way. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was realistic, but Fireplace. it looked beautiful. Yeah. In the stone. <laughs> um, she waits for him. She helps, you know, she fills out the paperwork. She waits for him. Um, she ends up in his, at first she thinks he does have a husband or, you know, a partner, but he does not. That's his business partner. Um, who interrupts and FaceTimes at, at urgent care. And um, she ends up going to his apartment and bringing him a lot of soups and food. And, you know, it was cute that she offers to type for him. They kiss, the partner walks in. I thought he lived with him. I was like, are they roommates? <laughs> right? But clearly they're just very, you know, he is like- Dependent. Married to him, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, so I have commentary on this part. Yeah, I don't sure. Know if, so yep. um, I mentioned a little bit ago, or when we were like talking before we started today, uh, that Carrie's like mother instincts have been really coming out since she started grieving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that this was one of those. That's true. It's almost like parallel with Lizette, where she like, you know, she took on a character that she has no connection to. There's no obligation mm-hmm. for her to... Uh, take care of this person really and she doesn't really know them she didn't know Lizette and she doesn't know this guy but I think what gave it away to me um, re-watching it and seeing her the second she entered the urgent care and she's saying I don't want to be responsible for a clot like I don't want a clot like he it might be this it might be that uh, to me that gave you know this mother energy where she's like oh my god this is a child I have to take care of and then she goes over there not knowing what his house looks like not knowing his income not knowing any of that she's assuming that he has nothing to eat that he lives Mm -hmm. in some hole you know she's like making all these assumptions where she's like oh I'm gonna be the caretaker now and it's very interesting because I you know I don't know I'm not a mother, but I don't know where that's really coming from. They mm-hmm. haven't really pointed out like what's really happening here. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it, it jumped out after, you know, maybe guilt or like disappointment for not being there for big. I don't know. That's, but... that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. She's like trying to save, save them. Exactly. And I, th- yeah. especially like the whole clot thing and everything. So that's, yeah, very, very good observation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's see where that goes. Um, so they end up, I think they kiss. Yeah, that's when the partner walks in. They do go out to dinner. They go back to his place. But Paul FaceTimes. What I found funny, too, was um, George, who's the guy on the bike, um, keeps like he takes the phone and he just shows, you know, he's like, I'm with care. Like, doesn't he, like show the room, like show the urgent care. I'm like, what do you, what do, you do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so George forgot to send this deck. <laughs> For the app to i don't know to, and paul starts so he goes to do that and leaves her there and then paul just starts talking to her basically <laughs> she's like doesn't want to be you know on the camera and everything and she walks out of the room and tells george he's married to paul and wishes them a long yeah. and happy marriage <laughs> so that that ends um the other story like the last one charlotte right um rock was at a skate park and is spotted by a scout, a Ralph mm-hmm. Lauren scout. And 
Charlotte's very excited about it. Um, Harry is very skeptical, you know, thinks it's some kind of scam or something. So um, Rock says, you know, I will, I'm going to plant. So basically Charlotte goes along with it, calls the person, they meet all the stuff, they're doing it. And Rock says, I'm going to plant some trees in Israel with the money, like trying to make Harry feel better. Yeah. Um, they go to the shoot. Harry shows up big <laughs> in the disguise. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, Charlotte's basically like, get out of here. And right. I think that's about it. Also, yeah. Charlotte felt mm -hmm. such an affinity because she was a teen model <laughs> wearing at the mall, wearing a Ralph Lauren shirt, I believe. Right. Um, I think that covered all of them, didn't it? <laughs> LTW didn't have a big part in this one. Mm -mm. This time around. Last yeah, time. Yeah, they did last, last time. time she did. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the fashion segment. Um, do you want me to start? Yeah. Or, okay. So I wanted to start first, but I just wanted to say that I wish Carrie's dress when she was in the um, costume, which maybe wouldn't have gone with this woman, but I wish it was a jumpsuit, like a 70s. Like mm. it just looked like that. Oh, it would have been so cool if it had like the... Um, tapered pants um i would have liked it better than the dress that's just my opinion okay other outfits i liked i loved miranda's cut out sweater um that she wore to the costume party um i don't know i could show you guys yeah that was that cute yeah. it's actually it's apparently it is a sweater and a skirt i think it's not okay. a at first i'm like oh this is a dress but she wore a different skirt i think what were you gonna say <laughs> I like the choice with that outfit. Um, I think I've been noticing Miranda's been wearing more of the lesbian flag colors. I don't know oh, if really? you guys have picked up on that. No. Um, I like. I don't remember if that outfit was entirely like orange, pink, and purple. But if it was, like, that's the one I'm thinking of. I've been just like noticing, like, oh, interesting. Slowly, they've been putting her in those warmer tones, like this, mm. like orange pink purple like or like a little mm -hmm. bit of orange and everything and i think that part of that was also why she dyed her hair back to ginger mm -hmm. in a way it was like oh like i'm reinventing myself i'm going back yeah. to you know explore myself obviously but i yeah. think maybe there are some hints in the color scheme oh. itself mm. but that is cool. you know a complete like that's my personal i'm picking up on it it might yeah. not be intentional at all um but mm. yeah i, I did yeah, like not. that for the for the halloween you know mm -hmm. entrance I did wish that they would, you know, actually put in more effort to the costumes. There was kind of like a running joke that nobody really put in an effort, but it was a Halloween episode. I'm a Halloween girl. I wanted to see everyone go full out. <laughs> I love Halloween too. She, uh, Diana and I have had conversations about this. Uh, she's she's not, but I, I honestly think it's because if you have the prep and the idea, oh, you run with it. Like, I think Diana right. needs the, the prep and the... She gets it's, it's stressful. Yeah. It's very so stressful. if anyone would like to buy this sweater, uh it's Stella McCartney. Actually, I don't even have mm. the price here. <laughs> it's on Shop Your TV. Um Okay, they're like, get it secondhand at eBay. Yeah, okay. I'm not even you know what? I'm not even gonna click on the price if that's yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> Stella McCartney. <laughs> okay. Second outfit that I loved, um, or stuff that I loved. Um, actually, I liked all the pieces in Carrie's outfit when she meets the bike guy and she almost kills him. Um, that's what I wrote down At head to toe, yeah. the dress, the overcoat, whatever, the, of everything, even the shoes. Yes. I like oh. the shoes. Yes. Those probably I took a shoes. lot of time to get on. <laughs> so this was a lot of buckles. I, the no, whole can't. thing. Yeah. It's beautiful. For those of you who can't see, it's a plaid jacket let's see if they have oh the dress is oh marakshi life um i think i you know what yeah i did i thought i my put everything range? i don't even know I should, I should. usually i put the price range <laughs> the boots ah oh, the boots are sarah what? jessica parker they're sj of course they are by sarah of jessica parker i can't believe i didn't see that marshall boots nice. I can, I'll find out. They are, they're out of stock. <laughs> oh yeah. Shocking. Immediately. Shocking. Yeah. Out of stock. Yeah. They were very cool. Um, I thought I clicked on the, the coat. 
Yeah, her rosé has been out of stock as well. I can only get her Sauvignon Blanc. It's like a whole issue Uh-oh. over here. Oh, boy. Um, I'm a fan. It just happened to the, the link I had. Okay. The Oh, I could find out how much the dress costs. I thought I also clicked for the, the coat. Okay. Mm-hmm. The dress is $680. Okay. They I still mean... have extra small and small left. In case you guys are wondering. On shopbop.com. Oh, it's on Shop Bop? Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> you a get a discount code? or something? <laughs> <laughs> like $600 off maybe or more? Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. I, I did like Seema's full white sweater outfit, but I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't go look that up. Okay. Why don't we let, um, do you want, Ofex, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, okay. My <laughs> outfit for this episode like I said, I was a little disappointed with the lack of effort in the Halloween costumes. Could have definitely gone harder. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think my favorite outfit was the all vintage Ralph Lauren worn by Charlotte when Aww. she took rock. It, I just like <laughs> mm-hmm. to me, that's like more than just, you know, a nice outfit, a cute outfit done well by the fashion team. It's like mm-hmm. symbolic. You know, she's taking her kid to this like new mm-hmm. adventure. So she's wearing something that reminds her of her childhood. And I think yeah. especially with, um, a lot of the focus with Charlotte's, you know, acceptance of rock was based on clothes. So this is like a symbolic, like, you know, like wearing a pin, like it's like saying, I'm Mm -hmm. here to support you through my ways. And I I thought that it was both on point fashion wise and it was, you know, a good little moment. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Very Charlotte. Is that it? Is that, is that the, do you have any more fashion? Okay. That that is my main one. I had, (laughs) okay. okay, This isn't really like a fashion fit where I'm like, oh, I would have totally worn this, but I, again, Mm -hmm. I really point, like I give pointers to the fashion team for inserting little things without us noticing. Uh, When you listen to the writer's room podcast, one of the first things that they mentioned was the shirt, um, the Georgia O'Queef. It said, like, it didn't say O'Keefe, but it says literally O'Queefe. Wait, and who had that on? I don't think it's um, I in the it's very, like... very beginning. Yeah, like, I missed it until I watched the writer's what? room uh, okay. podcast. It's in Wait. the very beginning. I think either Shay or Miranda is wearing it when they're in that 5 a.m. like exchange between oh, the two of them. Okay. Uh... So they're, like, half asleep. But um, they said that they bought the shirt and then they tie-dyed it. And I think that that you know (laughs) that is what a gay person would wear to bed like Mm -hmm. that is like to me Mm -hmm. that was just such a small detail but it's so good that's so good i don't think you can even read the shirt from the way that the scene is going like they're you know they're half awake or they're like tossing and turning type thing yeah but um when i listened to that little detail in the in the writer's room i thought that was mad funny and um (laughs) you know again like a little thing that i would have never noticed but they had a lot of intention with it yep I love that. All right. What you got, Diana? Um, my my shout out goes to Carrie's Cosmo purse. I was like, did was oh, that yeah. a magazine rolled That's up? Because then you saw the side. Like it was yes. I, it was, that was I gorgeous. Did, I loved it. I have to love it. I didn't know that was a purse. I thought she was just carrying the <laughs> Yeah, I think there was yeah. they made it into. It was beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my god. Me too. I didn't notice it until she like she held it up to point out to Miranda that she was wearing yep. a costume. Right. And you could see that it really is like a clutch. Oh that was gosh. really cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And you know there's how many more things in this episode probably that yeah. we didn't even know. I know, but that was my favorite. That's besides awesome. her outfit when she ran into the biker. Okay. Um, anything else? No. <laughs> okay. So All right, we're going to the love-hate segment. So I'm going to name some things, and you guys say love or hate. I don't know how we should do the order. Should we just have you guys say it? (laughs) Should we do thumbs up, thumbs down? I know, but for people listening, I know people listening. I know. Okay, know. How about we go? Because she's our guest. We will have (laughs) Ofek, Diana, then me. Harry's way. Big thumbs up for me. I thought it was the funniest (laughs) wig they could have chosen, but it actually was laid really well. (laughs) And when they brought it back later in the episode, I was so happy. I, I mean, no, no. That's a no. Do you know I'm torn on that? When I first thought of that to ask you guys, I was like, hated it, and I'm like, no, but I loved it because of what? Yeah. 
he looked so <laughs> weird. Like it was <laughs> so yeah. We they must have been dying on the set. Okay. Yes. Second thing, Harry in disguise to spy on Rock. Rock. Oh, fuck. Did okay. <laughs> loaded answer on one hand hate it because he's not respecting like charlotte saying you know Mm -hmm. i'm making the decision right now and whatever but also it came out of a place of caring for his kid and he just wanted to make sure that his kid isn't being hurt and i think any good parent would do that if they really had that gut intuition so i'm gonna go with it's okay but don't do it again (laughs) i'm with you i I think it was it was a oh sorry no you got cut you off go ahead I was just going to say, I thought it was um, a no. I wasn't into his exchange with the guy, the, the guy on the um, screen. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was not happy. I was not happy about it. I also was like, how did, how did he get in? Come on. <laughs> did he show ID that. that he didn't look like? Like, how did he get into the shoot? Oh, and I always man. like think it's stupid things like that. Uh, but I did like it for the fact that we did get to see the wig again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And everything. Um, I think I know what your answers are going to be on this one. Carrie's Halloween costume. Good. Cute. I do agree <laughs> that it could have gone more. It could have definitely been like a really fun 70s jumpsuit and whatever. But yeah. I actually do think it's very on brand for her to go as something yeah, like yeah. this, like in an age where like no one is going to recognize that or like, you know, she right. could have put mm-hmm. it on TikTok and who would have known what that is, but she, <laughs> she went with something true to her. And I like that. Yeah. Totally love. Yeah. Yeah. I loved too. And it, you know, being older, I'm not as old as Carrie, but the old when you get older, I mean, you just you're kind of like okay what can i be can i grab something mm-hmm. from my closet because <laughs> they're all like you wore right. that last week um so i would totally have done something sort of similar maybe <laughs> okay the last one i have which i think you're all gonna say love is carrie's the outfit the mixing the patterns with the plaid jacket the striped dress the and then the tr- like turquoise blue boots okay Love or hate? Oh, yeah. Love. <laughs> love, but I think she's the only one that can pull it off in that way. <laughs> <laughs> so love it, but I would love a tutorial on how to do it just like yeah. Right? Yeah. I loved too. And I don't always love. I, I wasn't sure, Diana, if you would love the that she mixed the patterns. I wasn't sure. I, yeah. And I've, I've, I've watched or followed, uh, not this season, but more recently about mixing like leopard because I love animal prints, but like with polka dots or stripes to offset. And so I was like, yeah, probably would need somebody to put that and tell me that that worked, but totally Mm -hmm. in for it. Definitely a tutorial for sure. (laughs) You know what? Okay. That was my last one. And I realized I skipped over. I can relate. (laughs) I saw that you did. I didn't know if you can. No, it's just, it went under my table. That's really why. Cause I, it's on my lap. So I can relate. Um, Oh, fact, do you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> okay. I do have a lot, a little bit, so I'm going to... Oh. Oh, okay. That's good, because um, I don't have a lot. <laughs> I can relate to a lot in this episode in the sense of, I think, the queer representation that was shown in um, their dynamic, like Shay and Miranda's dynamic. Uh, mm-hmm. That's one. And then two, I, I did just like, it's a silly little joke, but I like that in order to convince their dad to do something, they were like, I'll go plant trees in Israel. That is relatable to me, uh, for sure. <laughs> I, I would say something like, yeah, let me go volunteer in Israel so that I can do this vacation. Um, <laughs> I, I, I did like that. And also, I haven't, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Rock really reminds me a lot of my younger sibling. Um, to the to the look too, like the way that they looked in this episode, I was mm. like, oh my God, it's my sibling. Where mm. where are they right now? Ray Ray. Aww. Um so that was really cute and it it definitely i kind of related to charlotte in the sense where like you know i'm i'm no you know ralph lauren teen model from the mall but i i do <laughs> like you know communicate with my sibling and as they as the middle kid as the like mediator between the older ones in the family and just like being like hey this is something that they really want to do and mm-hmm. i do think it's good for them um mm-hmm. 
but again, I'm not their mother. And so I don't have final say, so I, I will yeah. say that. But yes, okay, let's go into the queer aspect of this relationship. Um, there is so much to say about Shay and Miranda, but I think particularly in this episode, there was really good communication between them mm -hmm. on, you know, Miranda coming to Shay and saying, this would be good for me. And Shay saying, I would love for you to still be here, but I want you to do what you need. That's mm -hmm. not something we see a lot um, as a lesbian or as someone who dates non-binary people. Either way goes like there's this idea of U-Haul or if you guys have heard of that, have you? Mm -mm. So no. U-Haul lesbianism is like a term for like, it's like a verb. U-Haul means like you moved in really quick um, and you committed to okay. living together very quickly. And mm -hmm. Miranda and Shay did show us that U-Haul dynamic. Like they met while one was married and they, you know, they uproot, she uprooted her life mm -hmm. to date this person. She went with them to California. She came back. She's dependent on their apartment, even though it's really harming her like right. her day to day. And that's something I don't like to see in media because so many of us in the sapphic community do that. We are dating people from eight hours away. We're dating people like we're, we're, you know, um, committed to these really intense relationships. That's almost like the polar opposite from heteronormative relationships or like what my experiences with dating men have been, uh, that it like ricochets the other way. So I was really happy to see from Miranda and Shay this like, I love you. I want to spend all my time with you, but it's not working. Like I mm. need to be able to go to class. I need to prioritize my class and my kid and my family. Mm -hmm. And Shay literally saying, you know, as much as I would want for you to be here, I'm glad that you're doing that. Um, so I like that. Then later they have an intense moment of communication again, um, where I felt like I almost related to the both of them. Like I've both been the Miranda mm -hmm. and the Shay in the scenario mm -hmm. when Shay is just saying, they're just saying like, I, I just need to be a mess right now. I don't want you to cheer me on. I don't want mm -hmm. you to tell me woo hoo. Mm -hmm. She was saying like, <laughs> she's saying they could go eat crap and all these things. And, yeah. and Shay was saying, I, I need, like, I need to just be this, you know, I need to let this unfold. I need for this to just exist. I don't need mm -hmm. it to change or be told it's okay. Um, I thought I thought those were really like positive messages to put mm -hmm. out to uh, the audience and especially for someone like me who's watching who hasn't had, you know, these lifelong relationships that, mm -hmm. you know, are so relatable to the usual target audience in the show. But like to actually see someone saying you can communicate this way and it's OK, like it's OK to tell your partner that you need them to go home for a couple of days because you mm -hmm. need to just wallow and it's OK as long as you're, you know actually telling them what's going on and you're mm -hmm. letting them in on what's happening i didn't like the one thing i didn't like is that like the second after it happened shay's like shaking trying to light a joint like they're like like yeah, yeah like mm -hmm. i just need to chill and it's like yeah. not really the best um feedback like i like mm -hmm. for that person i think that um shay is like could be this monumental character for so many people who relate to their identity and but like they say literally in the show any small move like any small um factor to their identity that paints non-binary people in this like depressed light but literally what shay is saying in the show like it, yeah. i'm taking from their script but it yeah. is very accurate to real life and i'm very glad that they're saying it that yeah um that it's almost like this c comedic um caricature yeah caricature of a non-binary yeah. person just like the feedback from um the the times square people mm -hmm. were saying i i was happy that we saw like literally that person say you know this it is it is what shay is saying shay is trying to say this about themselves and this is a character that's based on them and obviously shay is going to take it like personally because the show is based on them as a person mm -hmm. but the commentary was good like it wasn't nice because it's based on Shay as a person. But if this was just like for us to hear, this is what non-binary people have to say about their representation in media. It was really positive to see that. So yeah, that's my little relatable. Cool. Nice. <laughs> right, Diana. Um, uh, I could relate to um, tripping over something in the middle of the night. Me too. <laughs> so that was my relatable moment in the pot or the uh, show, uh, the nonstop, whatever chair thing that's in the way. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> also, Dancing to Creep by TLC. Uh, 100%. Does that mean that you was... have really deep ones? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we're really deep on this. But <laughs> when that jam comes on, it is, I mean, it's almost yeah. as good as when, like, Belle Bib DeVoe comes on the dance floor for us. Yeah. I mean, it's all out, get out of my way, running man, look out. So, super <laughs> oh, <gosh>. relatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I did have the banging into the same chair over totally. and over. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yep. Story of my life. All right. All right. Oh, we're down to our analyses. Um, my one thing, I really, I felt like there wasn't a lot of speech stuff or language stuff. Mm -hmm. It was the like the faux, really, really overdone to me, overdone New York accent from the person that was at the show testing for Che. Oh, she okay. says, his hair, it's so luscious or something like that. That's that's the only real speech thing. <laughs> when they're talking about Tony Danza. Tony Tony Danza? Yeah, Tony Danza. All right. I make fun of her buffalo take accent. On the, Sorry. The buffalo okay. accent? Psychological. You know what? More I didn't serious really, I don't have much um, to say on this. I think Carrie sort of analyzed mm. the guy on the bike for me um, and figured it all out. Yeah. So... That's all I was going to just say, know about, you know, the whole marriage, you know, he is married to his partner, you know what I mean? And yeah. his work and whatever. And that's, that's really, she had it spot on. Do you, what and do you live think a long, about happy life? What do you think about what OFEC said about her acting, you know, like mothering? Um, yeah, I do think that there's a tie into, uh, obviously big and what happened to him. Uh, than her neighbor. I mean, yeah, and the the whole mothering thing. I I do like the way that they're, but she's always been sort of I'm trying to think of Carrie. <sighs> she I just thought of Charlotte that. more than mothering. Yeah, yeah, Carrie but somebody's too. got to take over at some point in That's pitching, true. right? Yeah, yeah, it's only natural, you know. Yeah. So, absolutely. That's all, all I right. really had to say about okay. that. Um, I liked the episode. I did. Did you like the episode? Oh, in fact, it sounded like you did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was a slower one for me. Yeah. Like you, there was, I think, okay. Especially with the dynamic between the bike guy and Carrie, I kind of just was like <laughs> waiting for something to happen. And it was just like, okay, <laughs> are you going to talk yeah. about something or, um, but no. I did like, you know, Besides the pacing for that, like, I really did like a lot of the things that we saw in the sense of, mm -hmm. like, we got to see a lot of really positive things from Charlotte and Harry, like, talking about their own dynamic from mm -hmm. um, Charlotte and Charlotte and Rock, like, within their own relationship and, like, Charlotte's, you know, identity as a person, etc. And like I said, yeah, really, like, a lot from Miranda and Che on just, like, what what it really looks like. And I think that that was more important than the pacing for me on mm -hmm. this episode. So yes, okay. I did like it. Yeah. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And the mm -hmm. pacing was a little slow, but mm -hmm. yeah. And we're all waiting for season. Aiden. We're just waiting because it's all over the, we're waiting for Aiden. The fact that, that Aiden's <laughs> we're, coming. So we're it's like, when Aiden. is he coming? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's coming soon. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's it. And why don't you let people know where they can find you? <laughs> so <laughs> you can find the podcast Instagram at self determination podcast. We will be on Spotify and all platforms where you can listen to podcasts, hopefully starting in September. Awesome. Oh, awesome. All right. All right. Well, well good thanks. luck with uh, the journey yeah. with the podcast. And we really appreciate you coming on and chatting with us and yeah. having a different perspective because, uh, it was yeah. it was wonderful. So thank you. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Bye everybody.